we've been in assistive technology for a long time, we've been fighting these myths forever, right? And so it's it's helpful to have the Department of Education behind saying, yeah, we know that these are the myths that out there that have been out there, and here are the facts for that, and pull those out of IDEA. But then for what purpose, right? One, it is to have assistive technology um, in the hands of kids that and students and learners that need that. But it's also when we're in the K-12 system is having those IEPs, right? And assistive technology can be a really core foundational piece that can help and surround and to create what I call these strength-based IEPs. And we know on the considerations page that the first consideration that we ask is have you considered assistive technology? I, for one, don't think that that is random. I think it's pretty important. Those of us who've been in assistive technology for a really long time, and I've been in it for about 30 years now, when we have these myths and we have these things out there and we talk about having a strength-based IEP, I just wanted to step back and take a minute to talk about when IDEA came out of the context in which it was created and what was happening within our society, that this document was really based on and IEPs are really based on that kind of model of disability. And so we're just going to have to go back and just take a look at that and look at that brief history. So we know in 1975, we had the PL 94-142. And throughout that, throughout the history, we have had these pieces added on or amended or reauthorized. So throughout this, we've had this history of that, but it's all been based on, right, this essential document of IDEA, which was the EHA um, in 1975. Again, with that, we've gone from this medical model where it shows that the problem lies within the learner. It's a deficit model. When we look at IEPs, what are we doing? What is what is wrong? What do we need to do to fix that, right? And that medical model, it's really put in there. So some of these things that we're kind of coming up with and how with these myths, I feel like are have evolved has been kind of, it's not our fault. It's just, this is what was handed in what we have known, right? Now that we know better, we do better. And now we move as we're moving toward more of this social model of disability and where the problem lies within the environment. So just taking a step back and to know that like, there's no blame at all when it comes to that. Like that was, that's kind of just how it was created. And now we're going to create something different try to do something different with the document that still sits within that medical model. The assistive technology is in IDEA. If you need to reference that um, for AT devices and services of which this document has been built on, I encourage you to go through that. Here is the document. Why do we have a, this instructional technology and UDL, customized items that and when they become required in order for a student to make progress towards their curriculum, general education and curriculum and towards their IEP goals, then it must be included within their IEP, right? In order for them to access FAPE, our free and appropriate public education. So in the beginning of our little time together, we said, you know, what's one AT tool you can't live without? Could I actually live without text-to-speech? I could, because I am a reader, I'm a fluent reader, I'd be able to do that. But for our for our readers that that is not the case or for our learners that that's not the case and in order to access information and to make progress towards their general education curriculum and IEP goals that they have to have that in order to have access, then it becomes assistive technology.